Welcome to Carol Johnson Ministries. We invite you into the presence of the Lord, for in the presence of the Lord is the fullness of joy. Come, let's enter into his presence. God, we give back this moment in the word to you. God, I ask you to move by your spirit that only you can move. In the precious name of Jesus, Father God, word my mouth, God, speaks precisely to my mind. In the name of Jesus, let your people be edified and let some sinner be called, dear God, and drawn to you as we lift you up, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank God for you, you and you. Thank you for joining us for a moment in the Word this morning with Evangelist Carol Johnson, where truly there is a word from the Lord. There is a word from the Lord. And what the Lord has put on my heart this morning during this season and this time where our society on the western shores of the United States, we are seeing um, what some say is bioterrorism, but we're seeing things uh, and plagues coming to the land in that of diseases that are unknown in the Caribbean basin, uh, disease and illness that are unknown and plague that's in the land. And truly, we are living in the last days. But the word that the Lord has put on my heart this morning to, to share, and we will try our best to exegete this as best as the Holy Ghost will allow, is a word called deliverance, deliverance, deliverance. What does the Bible say about deliverance? Deliverance is defined as a rescue. A rescue from what? Deliverance is defined as a rescue from bondage, a rescue from imminent danger. Deliverance in the Bible is the acts of God, whereby he rescues his people from peril. He rescues his people from bondage. Uh, in the Old Testament, we see the hand of God delivering his people from bondage of over 400 or about 400 years, the children of Israel. Deliverance is focused primarily on God's removal of those, uh -huh. removal of those who are in the midst of trouble, uh -huh. removal of those that are in the midst of imminent danger. God rescues his people from their enemies, and we, show, we, we see so many Bible stories that show this accounted in the book of 1 Samuel, or even in the recordings of the kings in the book of 2 Kings. And we see God delivering his people from the hand of the wicked. We see God delivering his people from the hand of the wicked. Uh, and that's a reference in the book of the Psalms when you have the various Psalms, this including King David himself, where he writes uh, Psalms to the Lord and extolling God and asking God to deliver him from the hand of the wicked. Deliverance, deliverance. Uh, God preserves um, his people from famine, so therefore he delivers them from famine. He delivers them from famine. He delivers his people from death. Uh, there may be a loved one that's going through death and dying. God delivers them from death. And the grave. God delivers from the grave. Uh -huh. God is able to deliver from a dead, dying situation. Uh, we, uh, we also see and understand deliverance. Deliverance. The most striking example of deliverance, some say, as some scholars uh, say, is in the book of Exodus, as I alluded to earlier, the Exodus, the exit from Egypt when God delivers the children of Israel from 400 years of slavery. Here is God defined as a deliverer, a strong tower, the deliverer of Israel who rescues his people, who answers their prayers, not because they deserve to be rescued, but as an expression of his mercy and his love, his loving kindness. Deliverance in the New Testament is to lay this foundation. Uh, God is always the subject, and his people are always the object of deliverance. So God is the deliverer, and we are the people to be delivered or to obtain deliverance. The description of temporal deliverance in the Old Testament serves as a, as a metaphor, a symbolism. A, it represents the spiritual deliverance from sin, which we now have in this dispensation of 
grace through the precious sacrifice of his son Jesus the Christ, the anointed one and his anointed. God offers deliverance from mankind's greatest peril. God offers deliverance from sin. He offers deliverance from evil. He offers deliverance from death. God offers deliverance from judgment, seemingly just as he did in the Old Testament. For he's God. He changes not. Uh, He's God. There's nothing new under the sun. He's God. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. By God's power, uh he is the almighty, all-powerful, omniscient God. Uh, Believers are delivered from the present evil age. Uh, And that's the reference in Galatians, the first chapter and the fourth verse. God, he delivers us from the power of Satan's reign. Mm -hmm. All aspects of deliverance are available only through the person and the work of Jesus Christ, through the finished work of Jesus Christ, through the blood of Jesus Christ. All aspects of of deliverance are available and obtained. Who was himself uh, offered up and delivered unto God as a sacrifice Oh, my God. Redeeming man back unto his father's reference in Romans, the fourth chapter. So that we, 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 the people of God, can be ushered into now this dispensation, this wonderful dispensation of grace. So that we can be delivered from the eternal punishment for sin, which is eternal damnation. Mm -hmm. And we are offered, uh, by accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, eternal life. Because you will spend eternity somewhere but an opportunity to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior and to be delivered from sin, whereby we are saved by grace. Hallelujah. Only Jesus rescues us from the wrath of what is to come. Only Jesus delivers us so the saints can be raptured. Hallelujah. We, the bride of Christ, can be raptured to be with him. Hallelujah. And to be delivered from sin. Deliverance is often sought from evil spirits. Uh, People uh, cry out to God and ask him to deliver them from the spirit of lust. People can periodically cry out and ask God to deliver them from the spirit of jealousy and envy and strife. People can cry out to God and ask God to deliver them from a lying tongue, to deliver them from the spirit of fornication and adultery. People cry out for deliverance from evil spirits. People cry out for deliverance from sickness and disease, from the spirit of infirmity. It's important to understand as believers we already have eternal victory over Satan. We have eternal victory over demons through the finished work of Jesus Christ. So it's not work so any man can boast. It's no goodness of our own. But we are delivered through Jesus Christ. Therefore, there's a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that what Jesus is Lord. Ah, our great high priest, our intercessor, ah, our deliverer, Jesus the Christ. He can deliver us against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces, principalities, and spiritual wickedness in high places. For we know that the the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are what? Mighty through God from the pulling down of strongholds. So as believers, 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 we should defend our faith through the gospel of Jesus Christ and through the name of Jesus. Because at the name of Jesus, every knee what shall bow? Every tongue, what, shall confess that he is Lord. At the name of Jesus, oh my God, demons flee. So if you're battling in your mind and there's something, some situation that you're going through now, if you're battling with spiritual wickedness, if you're battle, battling with spirits in a spirit of confusion because God is not the author of the confusion, no, he is not. But the Bible says that God is the author and finisher of our faith. Hmm. So whether it be arrows of lust, uh, spirit bringing forth doubt, guilt, jealousy, self-guilt, self-condemnation. The Bible says, therefore, now there's no condemnation in him, in who? Christ. And we can do all things in Christ Jesus who strengthens us unto righteousness. You need to be delivered from jealousy. You need to be delivered from being a busybody in other people's affairs. You need to be delivered from evil speech. 
all manner of temptations we can be delivered from. Whatever your addiction is, whatever you're addicted to, addicted to lying, addicted to sex, addicted to all manner of secret sins, secrets, 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 God can deliver you if you want to be delivered. How can I be delivered, be delivered evangelist? I'm glad that question is on your mind. You can be delivered only through the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, because we overcome the evil one and his temptations, the one that is the father of lies. We overcome him by the Word of God. In the book of Second John, uh, young Christians see that their spiritual strength that came through the living Word of God. Uh, by the offensive weapon of truth, we overcome the evil one. And that's referenced in 1 John 2 and 14. So deliverance from sin, the rescue from trials, the escape from influence of, of a world and in the control of uh, what seems to be evil uh, government and, and, and spiritual wickedness in high places, say to the Most High God, we don't have to worry about Ebola. Why? Because we have the blood of Jesus. And the Bible says, the Bible says, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. So if you need to be delivered from worry, there's worry in your mind. All you do is you feed your spirit with the local news station and then reporting nothing but doom and gloom and gloom and doom. And you need to be delivered from that spirit of worry. You need to be delivered because your heart is troubled. And the Bible says, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Why? God is your deliverer. He is your strong tower. The name of the Lord. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run therein and they are safe. We find safety in God. So the Son of God has come. And Jesus has given us understanding so that we may know him in the power of his death and his resurrection. That Jesus has all power. So therefore, if we serve the one who has all power, now we could put our attention on Romans 12 and 2, which declares, and be not conformed to this world. So the world is caught up with worry. The world is caught up with angst. The world is caught up with isms and schism. The world is caught up with gossip. The world is caught up with backbiting and backstabbing. My God. But the Bible tells us in Romans 12 and 2, we don't have to be conformed to this, this, this world. But we are commanded, we are commissioned, we are of Christ. And Romans 12 and 2 tells us but we're to be transformed by the renewing of our mind that we may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Let me repeat that again. So deliverance, I want to end on this note, Romans 12 and 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Hallelujah that you may prove that good and acceptable, good and acceptable and perfect will of God. This is the will of the Lord concerning you. Let the Lord deliver you today. Let the Lord deliver your mind today. Let him transform your mind today. And let the transformation of your thoughts and your mind be manifest by your conversation and your vocabulary being changed. Change from one of worry and doubt to using vocabulary of faith and belief. And I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. Be you transformed by the reviewing of your mind. See to it that there be saving change brought forth in your life. And that it be carried on through your conversation. Oh, let there be a manifestation of sanctification. Oh, the renewing of your mind. The renewing of your mind, taking on the mind of Christ, will change doubt to faith. Mm. You take on the qualities in your soul, which is the seat of your emotions, to be still and know that he is God. 
the true and living God. No God before him, no God after him. To be still and know, as it says in Psalms 46, that he is God, that he will be exalted in the earth. He will be exalted among the heathen. So what they're talking about you? So what you're going through? Be delivered from people. Be delivered from people. My leader teaches us, they talked about Jesus, and Jesus is our example. Are we not Christians striving to walk and to be Christ-like, hence Christians? Did not the Hosanna crowd praise him? But then in a short while, not even a week later, they said crucify him? So what they praise you today and they talk about you tonight? They talked about Jesus, so they're going to talk about you. My brother, my sister, be delivered from people. So I pray that this moment in the word, this moment in the word today, the word was deliverance, that God will deliver you into a place of peace, that God will deliver you from whatever is troubling your heart, whatever the situation is that is on your mind, whatever the bondage is, that God will release you from that and deliver you and sanctify and make you whole. Again, remember Romans 12 and 2 as we conclude. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The Lord bless you, heaven, smile upon you. I praise God for you joining us today for this moment in the word. May these thoughts about deliverance, may this teaching about deliverance, and may the Bible basis encourage you today to, tr- to simply trust God. Encourage you today to turn aside from leaning to your own understanding, but to trust the Lord God with all your heart. He wants to deliver you today. May I invite you through prayer to trust God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for those that have congregated today for a moment in the Word. We thank you, God, for speaking expressly. God, we thank you for your biblical truth. We thank you, God, for in you we live and move and we have our very being. We thank you for delivering us out of our troubled waters. We thank you, God, for delivering us in the mind because healing begins in the mind. Change begins in the mind. Transformation begins in the mind. And, Lord, we thank you now for the mind of Christ. Lord, let deliverance be our lot. God, deliver us from ourselves. Deliver us from our own proclivities, O God. Deliver us, O God, from the secrets, the secrets, the secrets, the secrets, the secrets. The secrets, the guilt, and the shame. God, deliver, deliver, deliver today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, thank you for joining us for Carol Johnson Ministry and for this moment in the Word. May the Lord deliver you is my prayer. Go in peace, my brother. Go in peace, my sister. Jesus loves you. Thank you for entering in with us into the presence of the Lord. Don't you feel the joy of the Lord, which is our strength? Don't you feel rejuvenated, revived, and charged by the power of God? Well, we would love to hear from you. Won't you partner with us today? Send us your correspondence to Post Office Box 594, Manhasset, New York, zip code 11. 030 or you can use social media and contact us at evangelist carol johnson ministries at gmail.com you can also find us on facebook or on twitter evangelist carol johnson at gmail.com god bless you god bless you god bless you